Hey, travelers. We're back in the backyard, and... I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of like the backyard. Yeah. It's fun being outside. It's going to be a real bitch in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm built for cold. I, I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll dress up, and we can come back here. I don't know how the equipment's going to act, but... We're northern men. If there's a group of people that can handle a little cold, it has to be Wisconsin. I, I can handle it. Maybe a Minnesotan, maybe an Upper Peninsula. I'm a Michigan. South Dakotan. Oh yeah, you guys get yeah. some. You guys get some. Well, there's the see the hell of it is there's no trees, so everything just drifts. Yeah, you know, you're in the drift area. Yeah, land in the drift. Yeah, that'd be your pirate name. I was back for Christmas one time. Twelve foot drifts, man. Jesus. Yeah, it was crazy. But we're not here to talk about winter or anything like because it's still summer and actually today unseasonably nice yeah a little, just a little overcast which yeah is, which is which, agreeable. which is okay agreeable. it's good for the camera it's good yeah. For, no yeah, yeah it makes it look good it probably looks like bright on there too you know? yeah probably <laughs> yeah uh we're going to talk about something that we've talked about before but never really in depth and as in depth as we get anyway lactose yeah uh, what's up with lactose and beer man i i go to the store and i go everywhere and i look i look at the can even the front of the can contains yeah. lactose man yeah. Yeah, if you're lactose intolerant, not for you. Not a great time. Yeah, you might yeah. turn off this episode and just go ahead and walk away. Unless unless you take the pill for it, you know. There's the right. there's those pills. Everyone's got a pill nowadays. Yeah. You bet. Um it's essentially just uh like a milk sugar that's in beer. Right. That doesn't like to ferment. Yeah, so you get you get a little extra sweetness. A little extra sugar cuz you know, like you can always put honey. That's another sweet thing you can put in beer. Yep. But honey loves to ferment. Honey's begging sure. to ferment. Uh Lactose, not so, not so much. It's like, eh, stay away, stay away. So it usually just gives you an extra sugary, creamy mouthfeel. So so you could put it on your cereal? I would. Put the beer on your cereal? A milk stout or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, milk stout has been around forever. Oh, yeah. You know, so, the I mean. The lactose. Yeah, they've, they've been using lactose in beer forever, but now it's double dry hopped IPA with lactose, you know? You know and what? orange and raspberry and whatever. Yeah. This trend was coming a while ago because people were looking for more creamy IPAs. And I would say probably uh, five years ago or so, yeah. you started seeing a lot of oatmeal being put into beers. In fact, sure. I even homebrewed. My, one of my last homebrews I did was an oatmeal IPA. Yeah. And uh, that was just because oats are one of the five grains, and they add that creamy vibe. They don't necessarily provide a ton of flavor, but they do give you a nice thick mouthfeel. That's why oatmeal stouts are usually just heavy in the mouth. And... Um, they started doing those with IPA, but you know that, that be, in, in American craft brewing spirit, enough is never enough. <laughs> <laughs> so like how, America, how can we like? I, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, I'm gonna raise it once. So I'm like, I'm gonna make a stout out of milk, to, uh, out of lactose. And somebody's like, I like what you did there. I like what you did over there with the oats and the IPA. Hmm. Then they slammed them together. Yeah. They had a child, and now that I would say is probably one of the most prolific. <laughs> Probably one of the most prolific uh, ingredients being put into a lot of newer breweries and a lot of new upstart breweries. You know, that's it's kind of always interesting if you keep track of uh, the. Uh, we always, or uh, Andy would make fun of me if he was here right now, but I always like to talk about breweries coming in waves. Yeah. And he's like, what wave it was that? I'm like, shut up, Andy. <laughs> I, mean, I would have said that regardless of his question, to be fair. Right. <laughs> Man, what color is this guy? <laughs> shut up, Andy. <laughs> um, uh, oh, we miss Andy. I was talking to him on my way here, actually. Nice. I got lost a little bit. In Eau Claire. Still happens. I took a... Uh, I, took I wish I was surprised. I, I'm, I'm not. I can't be surprised. Can't anyway. Be su- can't be surprised by anything these days. Um, anywho, uh, in the more current wave of breweries that have opened in the last three to five years, I think you're really looking at a lot of them being lactose-focused IPAs. And we got a couple guys in town here that do a lot. It's not necessarily my favorite. It's primarily one guy, but yeah. I don't want to, you know, being traditional here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can you can be that way all you want, but this this beer actually uh, we we're, we'll digress and we're not going to go into that. But anyway, uh, this beer would actually be probably made by them, but I, I'm uh, it's a cherry. Read the read, I'm going to let you read something for a change, Troy. Cherry lemonade donut pastry ale. Yeah, that's a lot of words, isn't it? Well, I mean, so I feel like the word pastry is oftentimes attached to lactose beers because it gives you that pastry vibe. I yep. think that's a good descriptor, a good word I'm glad yep. we're using it as an industry. Uh, you know, I struggle to get, you know, out of the can without uh, spilling. And it's good that we're outside because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, Enjoy grass. Right. That's 
Maybe it'll maybe it'll die some of the kill some of the grass. What but happened to your grass here? Got some way too much sugar. It was a pastry ale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first thing that I noticed when I spilled some out, it still smells like beer. So. Yeah, that's a, usually my biggest critique of a of a pastry ale or a lactose beer is that they don't taste like beer. Right. Like I ultimately do like the taste of beer, and I ultimately do want a little beer flavor in my beer. Ideally, yeah. yes. I don't get much on the nose on this guy. No. Oh, my nose is plugged up. This is um. No, you no. get a little bit of cherry. Yeah, just a little. little but this this is uh this is delightful. Not that I'm surprised, but a little bit of cherry, some lime. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's like that's something we continuously talk about on the show. And if you're at home and you're playing uh, taproom travel, uh, travel or bingo, yeah, uh, balance is yeah. Is, beer is meant to be balanced. You know, you make a wine. A wine is one ingredient. I guess two ingredients. That yeast is a two sure. ingredient product. Whereas beer is a multifaceted ingredient product that is begging for balance. And uh, yeah, I think the and that that lactose, <clears throat> really, what for those of you that have had you know a, a lactose beer, especially one that's like this that has fruit in it, typically you're you're looking at a real sugar bomb. This is not a sugar bomb. Instead, what that lactose is doing is is just it's rounding that mm-hmm. that tartness of the cherry out. Yeah, that's a great descriptor. Um, you know, I would say as always, dangerous man nailed it. I, I I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, if there's one brewery that we would constantly or nailed it. It's dangerous, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, they are a dangerously good brewery. Um, yeah, I would say that definitely that little bit of a f- tartness in the sugar. And they didn't go heavy on the sugar because it's still ultimately a light-bodied. Yeah, yeah it's very light body. Actually, that's probably the biggest uh, surprise for me is how light the body is. Sometimes those lactose beers get, I mean, you're drinking a big wad of milk in your beer, essentially. Well, you're, you're drinking a big candy bar. And for yeah. those of us that can't, you know... A uh, uh, snack size or whatever those yeah. little the little ones uh, that's plenty for me. See, I'm from Wisconsin. When I when I go for dessert, I'm always asking what cheese you got. Yeah, I'm a cheese for dessert kind of guy. I'm, uh, that's, maybe it's the <laughs> French in me or something. Could be. He's like, yeah, you got any? You got any? You got any cheese? Any Gouda back there? Huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Got some Munster? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This but might be I, one of the. This is easily one of the most drinkable pastry ales I've had. Easily. Yeah, this yeah. is a surprising beer. For me. I was I was hesitant when I when I went into the uh, growler crowler shop there. They gave them all, and of your course, money. and of, yeah, I gave them all. The, well, Beth, my wife, gave them all the money. <laughs> Beth is notorious for uh, giving growler guys all of your money. Yeah, <laughs> I remember we did that one bus tour in the cities, and Beth was like, "She yeah. bought like two hundred dollars in merchandise." She's like, "I'll be back." And yeah. she just like took off walking to Dangerous Man. You're like, "Where are you going?" And she's like, "Dangerous Man." I'm like, "You're wearing heels." She's like, "I don't care." Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, right. Well, she bought, I think, uh, like a, like, a, like a yet? six like like a six pack crowler of uh, peanut butter porter, mm. and then uh, like a shirt and some other stuff. Funny little story. Andy and I went over there one time for uh, something that wasn't Dangerous Man related, but we were close enough to Dangerous Man, and we said, "Well, we might as well Uber over there." So we did. Oh, yeah. And Andy was, you know, we we'd had a few beers on the day, and. Uh, you know, we went into the crawler shop, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there was a uh, a mug in there. You know, a real nice mug, hand handmade mug. But it was you know sixty, sixty five bucks, something like that. Maybe it was eighty. I don't know. It was expensive, to the point where, and and when I've had enough to drink, my mind still functions the way that it normally does. I, I probably get cheaper. It just it just goes slower. <laughs> so. It's the difference Andy's, between Andy's, however, doesn't. He got his wallet out, and he was just just making it rain in there. So he uh, the next day, he's like, wow, I, 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 how much did I spend on that? And I was like, enough. <laughs> Andy bought, so he bought the mug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a nice mug. I this get cheaper when I drink. I go to, like, breweries, and they go, oh, you can buy all this swag. And I'm like, ah, I don't need it. I deserve it. My, my, you know, my, I'm good. My belly's filled with your beer. I'll I really, that. really like that beer, though. I'll take that beer home with me in my belly. Yeah. <laughs> Think you want a T-shirt? Meh. No. <laughs> it's probably not going to fit after today anyway. Do you have a? Do you have one that can fit a, a, a fat man's bust? <laughs> <laughs> do you have this in a gentleman's husky? Oh. And then of course I screw up the pour, but 
Uh, the the other thing that I wanted to talk about, other than lactose, because I we got a few more Dangerous Man beers that have lactose in them too. I just didn't want to, just didn't want to do it all on the same day. Yeah, you can know? only handle so much sugar in one episode. Ah, uh, ooh, the sun's coming. Yeah, out. the sun's coming out. Oh man. However, I wanted to talk about something we don't normally get to talk about on the show is a hazy IPA. Yeah, I guess. Have we not talked about hazy IPAs? Yeah, we have, but how often do we really do it? Yeah. And and really. Uh, we're starting to see the the hazy IPAs. At least I am, and I, and you can tell us from your perspective. You know, being in the distributor world, hazy IPAs still a thing or not? Oh yeah, they're a thing. They're de- yeah. they're definitely a thing. You know, they're just uh, taking a back seat to the seltzer right now. Uh, seltzers, God. we have to do a <laughs> seltzer episode. <laughs> just just get just just, all, just, get just all seltzers. I'll, I'll Uber here and we'll just get drunk on seltzers. Sure. Just, just drinking water. It'll take forever. Just drinking water in the backyard, like men. <laughs> flavored, flavored, flavored water. Oh <laughs> boy. So I'd say that. Well, uh, the lemon in that. Okay, first of all, hazy IPAs. First off, what's what's the name on there? I I forgot to read. Lemon that. Ron Hazer IPA. Hazer. Hazer. Yeah. That's why you read the names. Yeah. That's why. Why? 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 Am I'm I not sure what Lemon Ron is, but. I'm sure there's. I'd an like to meet Lemon Run. Yeah, there's some, it's a reference to something I haven't watched. Probably. Uh, I mean, hazy IPAs is an interesting story. I mean, you <laughs> you started off with East Coast IPAs initially being a carryover from England, so very mm-hmm. malt, very English malt driven, very malty. I can't explain how many malty English East Coast IPAs there used to be. Right. But really, the biggest difference was they got rid of that English alias. They went for that more American kind of a West Coasty uh, East. And then as IPA went, you know, uh, moved across and developed, you know, you had the West Coast had their IPAs nice and pine clear, clear. Yeah, filtered. You know, just, yeah, yep. a filtered, clear, but yeah, you know, a nice golden colored, uh, more piney resin, a little bit of fruit, maybe more grassy as opposed to citrusy. Sure. And then, um, but now we're seeing is like, you know, you're looking at the Midwest has kind of become what the East Coast IPAs used to be, those multi, because, you know, you your Bells, your Surly Furious, all those are, you know, multi or IPAs. And the East Coast kind of redefined uh, uh, themselves. And uh, I, I, I'm sure if there's a really hardcore East Coast beer nerd out there, you could correct me. But I would say Hetty Topper started making their the Head Tripper. Sure. He, right? Head Tripper? Head that tipper? sounds right. Yeah. I always get them mixed up with the Day Tripper from the Indeed. Right. Anyways, uh, they came up with their Hazy, and that just kind of, and like that's a, a very East Ford beer, a lot of malt, big, big hop build. And now that, you know, water, I guess, is important uh, that way. I'm not 100% sure what the Hazy IPA water uh, on the East Coast is is uh, contributing, but that that's really taken off. It's dominating. You know, IPAs reinvent themselves every two years, though. So we're we're on the verge of an IPA re revamp here. Who knows what the heck is next? It's always fun watching right? breweries trying to guess because that's how like a bunch of breweries stunk a lot of money into brute IPAs. They're right, not brutes. Those will be next. Can you name anybody that's making a brute right now? Right now, yeah. Nope. There you go. <laughs> the you last, know. the last one that I knew of was uh, Fulton, which you're actually wearing a shirt. Uh, yeah, they made uh, a brute, I think. Founders made a brute. Certainly made a brute. You know, so they 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 definitely got made. I think Fulton was the last one that I saw. And no. they just didn't like. They just never caught on. And like, uh, you know, back when black IPAs were dominating, a bunch of breweries sunk a lot of money into white IPAs, thinking those would be the next thing. Right. Essentially, a wheat beer with a lot of hops in it, but that never really took off. So it's you know, session IPAs dominant. Now we're starting to see low cal IPAs becoming more and more relevant. But I don't know if that's going to replace the hazy. I, I I tend not to play the guessing game. I, I just let the market dictate to me. What what they want, and I just uh, I just accommodate. <laughs> you mean a uh, watermelon uh, lactose cream double IPA is not going to be the next? I mean the 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 trick with the the IPA craze is usually a brewery. Like let's say uh, this is a great example. Yeah. Um, uh, Ballast Point came out with their grapefruit scalpin. And that was like the first real citrusy beer. Yeah, yeah. And that was a dominant beer, but it was also eighteen dollars a six pack. And then all of a sudden, you know, New Belgium and all the other breweries start coming out with their citrus IPAs, and those guys are going for eight ninety nine a six pack. So, you know, once again, as a few minutes ago, I'm cheap. So I'm like, well, that's eight. That's eighteen dollars. That's eight dollars. That might be better, but only a little bit better. Well, and, and speaking of fruity IPAs, so this is a lemon hazy mm-hmm. IPA. We're talking about and this guy and, so, sure. and something that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, 
I mean, a Crowler is, you know, it's a 750 milliliter because Minnesota's weird. You know what? Uh, multiple thoughts about this beer. Uh, I'm usually not a humongous fan of lemon and beer. It's not. Right. It's not a fruit. When you, if, if I were to mix fruit and beer, lemon is not a, a top five for me. But this is fantastic. I I think <clears throat> for me, lemon's not usually a big thing because the lemon just never comes off. Oh, this there's well, lemon in this. this this one does. Yeah, and for, there's it, lemon in it, but it comes off more as like a lemon pie, where you get you get a lot of the uh, the acidy stuff, but it's it's not harsh. Yeah. It's almost like the lemon's coming in, shaking your hand. It's like, hi, I'm a lemon. And then you get that back of the, yeah. the hops. I just want to paint a picture if I could. It's yeah. a lemon coming in like, hi, I'm a lemon. I'm yeah. here for your house party. I brought a six-pack of IPA. Yep. It's kind of like that. That's kind of what it tastes like. It's like it brought the IPA to the party, but it's still a lemon. Oh, yeah. It's it's still very much a lemon. It's still, still a lemon. <laughs> but it, it <laughs> There's was, a lot it was of a lemon nice that lemon guy. that brought a six-pack to your party. Yeah. You know? And I, Good and, I and I know, and believe me, we don't get a dime for Dangerous Man. <laughs> And we don't want it anyway. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take Rob and Sarah's money. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I would feel as good about it if we got money from them. Yeah. However, makes it hard to jerk them off. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that I do like is that we like their beers, and we're going to keep buying them because and and they're so damn drinkable. Yeah, they and, make they honestly. And this is seven point two percent alcohol. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a dangerously. This would be a, a phenomenal beer to share on a boat. Yes, on a hot day. Yeah, because you get those, you know, we live in Wisconsin here, and, like, summer shandy is pervasive. It has permeated every facet. Well, it's not just permeated Wisconsin. I mean, I, and anybody out there, you can get summer shandy. I could buy summer shandy anywhere. when I was in St. Martin. Yeah, in absolutely. The Caribbean. I went, I went, <laughs> I went to, uh, I was just south of the Arctic Circle in Alaska. <laughs> you know what I could get up there? Summer, summer shandy. shandy. Nor it's never really summer. Well, I mean, it is. It's light all the time in the summer. Yeah, I suppose but they got like intense summer. It, it it has been getting more warm up there lately. Uh, yeah, yeah it's sadly global warming. Uh, so, <sighs> I know. But that's a whole other episode yeah. that we we'll, probably we'll, will never do. We'll have the global warming <laughs> episode a different day. I promise. It'll be the saddest damn episode <laughs> ever. Doesn't mean you've been drinking. <laughs> Just cheap beer and be like, so that's you, that's going to be a scotch episode. We're all doomed. <laughs> 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 so this is fantastic. I would actually rather have this in a summer shandy. If somebody brought this to a party, yes, be like you know, we, uh, motherfuckers like lemon. I get it. Oh, I swore, Jesus. I'm sorry. Ding. <laughs> Uh, Got it. You know, people like lemons, but I, summer shandy's gross. Yeah. Here's a. Here you go. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. Lining kugels are nice, folks. I the lining kugels people are Keep probably s- probably some of the nicest people you ever Keep meet. Selling them to anyone who wants them. I'm not fond of the spritzing, but that's just me. Haven't tried it. Uh, yeah, you have. Oh. We did it. We did it on one of the. Yeah, uh, you're right. I did. I got it right. Yeah. On the, uh, the guess spritzin? guess the guess the beer episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got the old chub. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Good job. Anyway, I know my way around a chub. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> anyway, dangerous man. I know we talk about him a lot. Good stuff. I mean, if hard to get. Been... If uh, by the way, out there, if you're uh, if you're a distance away, and you want some dangerous man, and you want to do a beer trade, just hit me up. Just yeah. saying, we're still looking for uh, Goose Island Bourbon County. 17, is that what you're looking for? 18. 18? I think that's the one thing we were missing from doing like a five-year Goose Island. The only thing I'm missing is an eight. 17 or 18. You can send both. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll let you know in the next episode. Yeah, yeah, we'll do I'll that. I'll check my beer cave. I have so much Goose Island, Burma County, except for one year. It's like, ah. Yeah. I'll trade you I'll trade you an older Goose. There I you got, go. I got a, like a 2016 I'll trade you. We could do that. Anyway, we're running out of time. So if you haven't already done it, you need to subscribe to us. Quickly, I'm doing a Badger Beer Hour thing. You, uh, we did it last night. So get in on that uh, Wednesday. We do, we do it uh, every third Wednesday of the month. Oh, what's that? What's so that it's uh, Wisconsin beers, and we do some news, and it's all Wisconsin beer stuff. So if you're in you? Wisconsin and interested to that. How do you find it? It's on YouTube, oh. Badger Beer Hour. So uh, check that out. I can't, check us. Better, I can't think of a better guy to put on that show than you, Linda. Thank you. Appreciate that. Check us out on the the YouTubes and all that good stuff, Facebook, Instagram, and we will see you next week, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.